Hi Aquarius, welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for March of 2020. We've got all kinds of stuff for you about Venus and Mars and also Saturn's making a sign change this month, so that's pretty important. And Mercury starts the month retrograde. It's going to turn direct in your sign. And then there are a couple of full and new moons to talk about. Hey, Julia, what's up with Venus for Aquarius this month? Mm, well, hey, Aquarius. So on March 4th, Venus is going to be entering Taurus, which correlates to your natal fourth house. Um, that's the house of family and home. So Venus is the planet of relationships. It's also the planet of beauty. So you might prefer to socialize much more at home than going out to do it. And if you're partnered, then you're going to probably, instead of going out on a date in a restaurant, you might also prefer to spend a little bit more time at home cuddling up with your boo. Mm -hmm. um, and this is also a really nice time to decorate your home because Venus is the planet of beauty, as well as get along well with family members. Mm -hmm. So if that doesn't happen at other times, <laughs> make good use of it. <laughs> then uh, we're also having the spring equinox this month on March 19th. And that's going to be a whole sort of start to a new cycle because the sun is leaving, you know, the sign of Pisces, which is the last sign of the zodiac and entering into the sign of Aries, which is uh, the next kind of quantum and leap forward. Um, so this is all occurring in your third house, um, and that's the house of communication. So this could be signaling a new cycle or a new beginning in terms of how you communicate with others, like if you do any writing, if you do any blogging or something on social media, or even public speaking as well. Now, a big transition which is happening on March 21st is Saturn is going to be entering the sign of Aquarius, which again correlates with your first house. And Saturn is going to be skipping back and forth between Aquarius and Capricorn uh, during this year. But usually when Saturn ingresses into the next sign, it, it will stay there for a couple of years at least. So this big shift, again, March 21st, is ha happening in your house of self. Now, wherever we have Saturn is where we can feel some limitations and where we can feel some frustrations and some challenges. Um, and in the first house, the house of self, um, over the next couple of years, you might be a little bit more limited in your freedom of movement, um, or as well as having just more responsibilities, whether they're work, whether they're personal, just it, it tends to bring on just a lot more responsibilities. Mm -hmm. um, so you might be in a lot more of a serious mood because you've got stuff to do. Um, and it's not necessarily when I say there's a constriction and maybe freedom of movement, it might be a little bit harder to be kind of spontaneous with your free time because there's just too much stuff to do. Um, but if you take these responsibilities in stride and really step up to the challenge, then this can be a very productive time for you as well because Saturn is also the planet of manifestation. And then the last planet I'd like to talk about is Mars. And Mars is going to be spending most of the month in your 12th house of the subconscious. Um, so when Mars is in this house, you know, you could be feeling a little extra irritable or kind of itchy out of nowhere and not really know why, um, because that can sort of represent the side of our minds, which we're not necessarily the most aware of, but are still very active in there. So that might make it a little bit harder for you to assert yourself during this transit. But then Mars is going to be entering your first house of self on uh, March 30th, so at the very tail end of the month. And uh, that means you're going to be embodying Mars energy. Uh, so that's going to be a really great time to assert yourself, where before, while it was in the 12th, it may have been harder. Um, so very good for kind of knowing what your rights are and standing up for them. Just be careful of not overdoing it. And what else do you see going on this month, Jamie? Well, uh, this month, Mercury begins the month in a retrograde state, and that's never fun, but we can always cope with it, and it's going to go direct during the course of the month. So, um, and I just want to show you that Mercury is here in Pisces at the beginning of the month, and Mercury doesn't like to be in Pisces. It's a very foggy place and it's so hard to think clearly for really anyone when Mercury is Pisces in Pisces, let alone when it's retrograde. Um, however, on the 4th, Mercury backs up into Aquarius, your sign. So that um, really, really helps with the clear thinking. And so the end, the tail end of this Mercury retrograde period is going to be, I think in some ways, not bad. <laughs> and, um, and I think that we have a chance to, um, to find some mental clarity uh, at the end of it. 
Now, part of what's going on there is that on the 9th, there's going to be a full moon in Virgo, and let's find it. There it is. And there's Mercury just getting ready to go direct and the sun and moon in an opposition. And I've been calling this coming out of the fog because I think that in retrospect, when we look back at this Mercury retrograde period, we're going to feel like it was really foggy. It was really muddy. It was There was a lot of confusion and it was a lot of work to stay patient uh, to let go of deadlines and and worry less about them. And, um, and that when this one comes to an end, it's going to feel so much better. And, um, and that moon in Virgo, I think, is going to bring a really strong desire to reorganize, to rebuild, to restructure, to redefine some of the things that got messed up while Mercury was retrograde. For you, this happens in the eighth house. And the eighth house is a house of intimate connections that you have with others. That can be physically, in other words, your sex life. It can be financially, in other words, the monies that you share with others, maybe in your marriage, or maybe in terms of loans and debts that you have. And it can be emotional as, to, uh, as well. It can be like, you know, the secrets that you share with people, the people that you really trust, your therapist, for example. So this Virgo moon in the eighth house is kind of saying, um, I want to restore a state of clarity and rigor in those deep relationships. So that comes um, around the ninth. And then um, as the month goes on, Mercury will be direct. It'll feel so much better in the second half of the month because of that. And then uh, Julia mentioned that the spring equinox happens and there's the sun entering Aries. And quickly you can see the moon catches up with it and we have a new moon in Aries in your third house with Chiron involved. And the name for this one is Springtime is for Healing. And the reason for that is because Chiron is the wounded healer. Chiron shows us the places where things have been broken apart, split off from each other, where there's a sense of a divide happening, where really things should be together. And Chiron shows you how to, and the importance of bringing it back together, knitting it together, and making it feel whole again. In Aries, this will have everything to do with um, anger, assertion, directness, honesty, clarity, uh, basically making the decision to be the hero instead of the villain, um, and figuring out how to heal your own assertion. Most people have their assertion somewhat imbalanced. In other words, some people assert themselves too much and tend to sort of do a hostile takeover on the people in their lives and other people don't assert themselves enough and they're like doormats that the people in their life walk all over. And then there are the people who engage in passive aggression and who assert themselves but in a kind of a sideways way that doesn't really have the effect that they always wanted and just kind of leaves the other person a little bit wounded or maybe a lot. So Chiron is offering us opportunities this spring, particularly around the new moon, particularly for the three days that, that surround the new moon, um, to heal that stuff and to find our way to a healthier, more vibrant form of assertion. And I think that's going to feel pretty good. Now, um, Aquarius, you might have missed your birthday reading this year. And if you did, it's not too late. Um, because on your birthday, you get a new chart refreshed every year, which tells about the themes of the year, and it's really worth looking at. Um, and so a solar return birthday reading is the way to do that, and also we talk about transits in that reading. And um, it's just such a good way to get your year started right that I really recommend you get one of those. Julie and I are both available, and we would love to meet you for that. And you can, you probably know, you can always find these horoscopes on our YouTube channel, Pandora Astrology, gathered into a monthly playlist. And the news of the month will be there too in its own playlist. And um, we'll see you next month. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.